Hello everybody, what is going on? And welcome to another fishing video. Today we are gonna be doing uh, another video on this dock. Same dock as the last video, the carp fishing video. If you haven't checked that out yet, leave a link down in the description below. But today we're doing something a little bit different. We're gonna try and do a catch and cook. So I'd love to catch and cook a trout, so we're gonna try for that. But they're pretty hard to catch in this lake, so alternatively, we might do a catch and cook pike minnow as well. So one of the two is happening today in this video. So let's get some rods in the water and get right into the action. All right, so we're just gonna go with a little slip float rig like last time with a little bit of deli shrimp. Just drift that right along the drop off out here and hope there's some trout, or at least some pike male patrolling around. See if we can't get one. Something, something's on this. Something's on this for sure. Yep, that's a fish. Feels like a pike mill. It's not really fighting too hard at all. Oh, is that, that pike mill? Yeah, it's a pike mill. I thought that was a trout for a second. I have no idea why, but nice little pike mill, not a huge guy. Didn't quite swallow the hook, but it take down a little bit deep. So I'm gonna grab my forceps for that. You know, this guy, I didn't, it's a little bit small for what I wanted to try for the catch and cook, but he's bleeding out the gills here. I don't know if he's going to make it. So I think the ethical thing to do here, since we're going to do a catch and cook anyways, would be to put this guy, put this guy down and we're going to bring this guy home. We're going to cook him up. All right, I'm going to spatch this guy. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've gutted this guy. I've bled him. I've cleaned all the slime off, and the reason I'm doing all this is because I want to give this guy the absolute best chance of tasting good, because I've never eaten pike mail before. And in fact, I've been told these guys are absolutely terrible. So, I want to give them the absolute best chance of being good, so I'm going to get them right on ice right now. I'm going to fillet them up and cook them when I get back to the cabin. But for now, I'm going to just put them on ice, and we're going to get the rods back in the water. All right, so we got our catch and cook secured. I see a couple pike mail down here, just little guys. So I'm just going to toss down a little piece of shrimp with this free weight, free, free hook, I guess, set up here and, um, and see if we can get one. But I'm pretty hyped about this pike minnow catch and cook because I've just like my entire life never had one. I've been catching them for years and everybody just tells me that they're, that they're absolutely terrible, that there's no point in eating them. And so I'm very curious to see how they actually taste. I think there's one biting. Oh, you saw it? He's just, he's just nibbling on it. He's not actually eating it. There he is. Ah, oh, missed him. All right, I'm gonna try again out here. I think they're still around. You know, I wanted to keep a little bit bigger of pike mail than that one, but that one, he was, once they start bleeding from the gills like that, I don't figure they're actually gonna make it if you let them go, and it's kind of a waste to just throw them back in the water like that, so. We're we gonna eat that guy. Anyways, back to the fishing. Don't think that the pike mill is still there. Oh, 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 had one. All right, I just kind of fly fished it back out there. Um, had one on there, kind of wasn't paying attention, but. Paying attention now. There he is, just a little guy. Is that pike mill or chub? Oh, that's a peamouth chub, that's cool. This is another fish I'd like to catch and cook at some point, never eaten. It's a nice little peamouth chub. I don't think we're gonna do that today though, because we already got the pike mail, but nice little chub. They make this noise out of the water. Get him in real quick. Cool. All right, so I caught that one chub there with the carp rod, but I think I'm gonna switch back to the float now. The wind's starting to pick up a little bit, which isn't the best for float fishing. It's definitely better when it's calm. It's also gonna put my microphone cover to the test. I made this, uh, this dead cat mic cover, which is meant to like block out wind out of a $2 beard, like fake beard I got from the dollar store. So I guess this is gonna test if it actually works. It's been pretty calm so far while I've been filming, but we'll see. It's not too bad, it's just a little gusty. All right, I think, I think this bad boy's getting hit. Yep. 
Oh, there he is. Yeah, fish on. Doesn't feel like a huge one. There's definitely something there. Oh yeah, nice little pike minnow. Oh, tiny, actually, I say nice. It's pretty tiny. Pretty tiny. And off he goes. I think the peamouth chub may have returned. I think I saw one down there. Could have been a pike minnow. Maybe a trout, but I mean, it's kind of hard to tell like here, but if I'm playing odds, if I saw a fish and I didn't know what it was, the chances of it being a trout are like thousand to one. I don't even know. Probably less. There's so many pike mails and stuff in here. All right, so there's there's some pike mail and stuff down there again, but there's something bigger, and I don't think it might be a pike mail or a chub, but it looked a little bit to me as though it might be a trout. So I'm definitely gonna get a bait down there. Just got the carp rod with a little bit of corn on and I don't know where it went. Oh, here it comes, here it comes. He's looking at it, he's looking at it. He looked at it, but he didn't take it. I'm not sure what that thing is. Is it a trout? Oh, it was a trout. I saw it. It was huge. All right, so there's a fish down there swimming around. And I think, I think it's a rainbow. I saw it when it came up to the top. It kind of flashed. And so I'm going to try and see if I can get him to bite again. I missed him. Bit and I missed him. So he's probably spooked, but I'm going to give it a second chance down here. Man, on the corn. I guess the trout here really like corn. Never encountered this before. I mean, I've seen, I've heard of trout eating corn, but I don't think, I'm trying to think if I ever caught one on it. I don't think I have. Dang. Well, these are, uh, oh, let's say a uh, little pea mouth chub. Not quite what we're looking for while there's a trout down there. Still a very cool fish though. Come on, chill down, buddy. Off he goes. Darn, man. I think the trout, I think he's spooked. You usually don't get more than one chance at, is that him? No. No, I think that's just a bigger chub, but there's loads of chubs down there, so. Try for them. All right, back on down we go. This is crazy, I did not expect to be sight fishing for rainbow trout on Okanagan Lake. But, I mean, I don't think that's what I'm doing anymore, because I'm pretty sure these trout have, uh, this trout's just about done with me after I He's, he's back. The trout is back, guys. The trout just swam by again. I'm gonna just pull this chub right on out of the water to try and not spook the trout. It's a good sized chub, actually, but I'm just gonna throw him over here and try and try and get back on him. Toss it right on in there. Hopefully he'll see it, come around to it. Shoot, get away from it. There's a little little chub trying to eat my corn. I'm trying to get the trout to eat it. That was a nice trout too. Probably at least a pound. Another chub. Man, I need a counter on how many of these chubs I'm getting. This is crazy. So many pea mouth chub. And they all look a little bit different too. It's pretty cool.
Oh, there he is. Is that Chub? Or is that Pike Mail? Yeah, it's another little Peamouth Chub. There's another one. Another Chub. Oh, there's a fish. Yeah, as soon as I can get the kayak out, there is another really nice Chub. It's a thick Chub right there. Don't take that out of context. That's definitely an innuendo of some sort. <laughs> oh, there's one. Oh, wow. That's got some fight to it. See, if I was trying to do a Peamouth Chub catching cook, this would be a good size. So that's about as big as I've seen them. But it's not Peamouth Chub catching cook, so it's this guy's lucky day. And he gets to go back. It's Pike Minnow catching cook. And hopefully trout catching cook, maybe. If we can catch one. I don't know how that would work. Make it like a double catching cook? Or like... I may have break it up into two videos or something. I don't even know. I don't even know. Let's figure that out once we catch the trout. See, now I'm wondering if that, that trout from over there maybe swam off out into this deeper area here, or if there might just be some other trout out here that are hungry for some corn. Because that guy seemed pretty interested. The shrimp... I've caught trout here on, on shrimp before in the past years, but... Like, uh, usually it's pretty hit or miss, whereas I've only been fishing with this corn for a little bit. And a trout actually bit it. So I'm just going to try the same method, just with the free line corn. But I'm just going to throw it out as far as I can with no weight. So probably not that far, but just out here over this drop off. I don't know if you can see that, but the water gets a lot deeper. It's pretty shallow all up to here. And then it just drops off there. And there's some weeds. It's a really good place for, for trout, for pike minnow. So I'm just going to toss hook completely covering corn out there and see if there's any takers all right so not very far out but i think far enough it's like five six feet out there keep looking behind me just at these uh at the boat launch there where that trout was though just in case he decides to come back all right, so I think what I'm gonna do is switch to some corn on the um, on the float rig after having that trout hit my carp rig with corn on it. But I think in order to do that, I'm gonna have to switch to a little bit of a smaller hook. Because the hook I have on the float rig right now, I think is a little bit big to try and load up with corn. All right, so I just got this, this little barbless hook on here, totally loaded up with corn on the float rig. I'm going to send it out, actually. It looks like this barber stop slid a little bit. So move that up a little bit and just send that. Oh, oops. Send this on out there. I'm going to send it out too far because the trout was pretty close in. I'm just going to let that drift by. We'll see what happens. All right, this float actually had a few casts here. It's been out for a while, drifting all over the place with the corn. Not a sniff. So, I think I'm going to pack up now and head on back to the cabin, but we have a pike mail that needs to be cooked, so I'm still excited because, once again, I think I mentioned this like six times, but I've never eaten pike mail. I'm really, really curious to see how this guy turns out. All right, so, I've got this pike mail now, back to, back to the cabin, and as I mentioned earlier, as soon as I caught this guy, cleaned off all the slime, um, gutted them and bled them out as well so there shouldn't be any blood in here. Now I did do a little bit of research on why everybody says these things are so bad to eat and the main reason is bones. More specifically there's Y bones that run like right along the middle of the fish here and they're really hard to fillet around and that's why a lot of people don't like to eat it. However there are some other fish that also have Y bones that get eaten a lot like northern pike and there's some methods for filleting around them so I'm going to try and fillet this northern pike minnow like you would just a regular northern pike even though I've never done that before I'm going to give it a go watch some YouTube tutorials so basically an expert at this point and yeah we're going to give this a go alright so the start here what I'm actually going to do and this isn't part of the pike thing but when I was guiding this guy some of the skin actually just came right off like that so that gave me the idea 
of trying to skin this guy before I actually fillet him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right around, all around here. And then I've got some forceps here, which are basically like pliers. And I'm just going to see if I can't grab onto the skin and kind of just peel some of it off. If I can't, that's okay. I'll take the skin off later. But, okay. So I'm actually, I think this might work. I'm just going to try cutting. See if I can, if I can break the skin right along the top here. I think I might be able to, to actually pull this skin off right now, which would save some work later, because I am, I'll tell you right now, I am terrible at skinning fillets. I always end up losing meat. Yeah, see, there we go. So the skin should just peel off. And what I'm noticing right now is this meat actually looks quite good. Reminds me of now, this might be a little bit out of shot there, but the skin is just peeling right off. All right, maybe not peeling off so perfectly, but it's peeling off pretty well. Let's see if we can't get the rest of it here. The meat, I mean, there's this little film of that weird looking, weird looking skin right underneath the skin that I should probably try and get rid of as well. So I'm not sure if that's gonna work really. Oh, that skinning's gonna work. I'm actually gonna just fillet this fish as I initially planned. I don't think the skinning is really working here. Although it did kind of work here, left a little bit on at the back there. So I'm just gonna fillet this guy and then remove the skin after. So to start, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down like so. I'm gonna turn my knife and I'm gonna go and kind of just cut right along the backbone here. And take a fillet right off the top here, like so. And this should be just about boneless, except for a few bones right down the middle that we're going to take out when we remove the skin. Now, what this has done is this has opened this up here, this back, and so it should be able to see and feel, yeah, exactly, where the Y bones are, and more importantly, where the Y bones end. So it looks like there's Y bones coming out to about there. And so I should be able to just cut around them and take a fillet. It's going to be a pretty skinny fillet, but a fillet nonetheless that is essentially quite boneless. All right. See, this is why I wanted to try and get a little bit of a bigger fish bigger pike minnow for this video because it's quite difficult flaying a fish this small in this method. But yeah, actually, now that I'm feeling along here, there is just bones all along here. So that was good. That was pretty good. And this here should be boneless. So that should be boneless. It does still have the skin on. So have to deal with this. Now, maybe this is making me think that maybe I should have done that on the other side too, because this side is already skinned, which is really going to help. I'm just going to move this camera over a little bit. Not sure how well it's been getting this so far. Little mosquito there. Guess we're just going to have to hurry up before these guys eat me. All right. So, where was I? Just going to cut along the other side here just on the outside of those those pin bones. Yeah, so I think if I do this in future, I'm actually going to take all the skin off, or try really hard to take off all the skin before I, um... Okay, hold up. There's mosquitoes actually everywhere, so I'm going to put some mosquito repellent on. I'll be right back. Alright, so now I'm back. Got some mosquito repellent on, and we're going to get right back to this. So, I think I'm going to cut a little bit too far in here, but there we go. So this is a boneless fillet. I can see why the bones are a problem, right? Because even with this, like that is quite quite a tiny fillet. That's like a little perch fillet, small perch fillet. And you know, that's a pretty big fish 
to get that small fillet off of. And then here, apparently, I think it's right past past the anal fin, there's supposed to be one more fillet you can do. No bones there, so you just go right down to the thing. To the, to the thing? To the, uh, to the backbone there. Flip that off, and then I'm just gonna go right here. See if we can't get that, that off. Oh, well, there you go. It's a nice little, little bit of boneless meat there. So I'm just going to start placing all these little pieces of boneless meat over there. Meanwhile, this filet that I'm cutting off, I kind of butchered this, but these do seem to be some boneless, boneless filets off of a pike mail, which I don't know, I guess it kind of worked. But, yeah, so this right here might look like there's a lot of meat left, but all this in here has pin bones running right through it, or even worse than pin bones, Y bones running right through all here, all through here, and then there's one more fillet here that I'm going to take off in a second here. I'm just going to rip this skin, rip the skin off first. There we go. And turn the knife down. Right through to the end there. Then actually, I'm gonna get that. I'm not sure what to call that. It's like another second layer of skin there. Right there, but now we've got one, two, three, four, five. This one still has the skin off, take the skin off, but five, and then this right here, when we get the skin and bones out of this, is gonna be six on one side here and seven on the other. So it's actually gonna end up, it's supposed to end up with five fillets. Um, well, six once we split this down the middle, but it looks like we end up more with seven. And yeah, so I'm just gonna finish this up really quickly here and then we'll get to cooking this bad boy and seeing how it tastes. All right, so after a lot of hacking and slashing through here, I've got this right here, which is boneless pike mail fillets. Not a huge amount of meat here, but this was a pretty small pike mail, so I'd imagine that if you got like a sizable pike mail, which is not very difficult to do because they're so damn easy to catch, uh, you could probably get a fair yield of meat. Like it's definitely not as much meat as you get off of like a trout of this size, but it's not too bad. So if it tastes good, I might actually be eating this again. All right, so here I've got my rinsed pike mail fillets. Like I said earlier, it's not the best yield of meat for the size, but it was a pretty small pike mail. And so I'd imagine if you did this for a larger pike mail, which would not be too, too hard to get, considering how easy they are to catch, then you probably get a fair amount of meat off it. But anyways, I'm going to hit these with just a little bit of this salmon seasoning. I just literally found this in the cupboard right now. It's just like clubhouse salmon seasoning. Just a little bit of that. Except I'm going to leave, I think, I'm going to leave one of these, maybe like this one here, uh, just with salt and pepper. Just to kind of get a feeling of what this would be like with absolutely no seasoning. All right, so get that with some season, and now we can hit them with some salt and pepper, all of them. Just a little bit. Regular, regular salt. And then a little bit of pepper. I don't think these ones need pepper because they got the seasoning, but hit some pepper for this seasoning-free one. And then I'm gonna get this new pan with just some butter and cook it up. All right, so I think this pan's nice and hot here. Actually, I have to turn it down for a little bit, but I'm turn that back up. I'm just going to get a little bit of butter in here, a little bit of butter, and some oil as well, just to make sure the butter doesn't burn, because sometimes when you just put butter in the pan, it'll burn. Lots of butter, because butter never hurt anybody. And just a little bit of olive oil. Usually I use a different type of oil, because olive oil kind of carcinogizes. Oh, shoot, that was kind of a lot. Whatever. We'll just roll with it. Maybe... I was going to say like a spatula or something, but I think a fork will be fine. Just to move this all around. Once that gets nice and hot, which I think it is, get these, uh, actually, I'm going to wait a little bit before I put the rest of them in because I don't know how hot that is. I kind of want it to sizzle right when I put it in. All right. All right that's a little bit better. Now I'll put this in. Alright, and here on the other side I'll put this one with no seasoning. Alright, so I'm just going to cook these guys until 
They're kind of not translucent anymore, so it probably won't be that long because they're super short fillets. Short fillets? Thin fillets, so I meant to say. And uh, super thin fillets. And then, yeah, I'll get them on a plate, and we'll see how these bad boys taste. All right, so I think this is just about done now. So I kind of broke this, the seasoningless piece in half, but it's just about done. It's all golden brown. So I'm going to get onto the plate and we're going to give this bad boy a little taste test. All right, so got this finally cooked. I have to say, it smells great. Now I guess that's kind of what you'd expect when you cook fish in butter, but you know, pike minnow, I've just heard so much bad butter, I didn't even expect it to smell good, but now kind of looking forward to trying it. So I think first I got to go with this. This is like the no, no seasoning, I guess. It had some, it had salt and pepper, but none of this like special fancy salmon seasoning. Just, I'm just done. Nothing wrong with that. It just tastes like regular fish. Like it's literally, it's really good actually. Just kind of buttery, a little bit of seasoning. It's quite delicious actually. I'm definitely finishing this and I might actually keep another one for some time. That's really good, actually. All right, I'm gonna finish up here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.